Let's talk about Dora metrics. Dora metrics measure the productivity of your engineering organization. If your four Dora metrics are all favorable, odds are your teams are delivering value to your customers and maintaining the quality necessary to remain focused on that mission. And that's pretty much the bottom line for any business, delivering value to your customers. Dora metrics were developed by an organization called DevOps Research and Assessment. This team put together at Google, surveyed thousands of dev teams across multiple industries to try to understand what makes elite engineering teams tick and what separates them from more average teams. What they ended up with are four core metrics that cut to the heart of what defines high performing teams. Deployment frequency, lead time for changes, also known as cycle time, mean time to recovery, and change failure. The first two metrics, deployment frequency and cycle time, measure the velocity of a team. Mean time to recovery and change failure rate measure quality and stability. These metrics are informed by both Git and project management tools. Velocity metrics can be found in Git, while quality and stability insights come from your issue tracker. They have become the standard way for CTOs and VPs of engineering to get a high level overview of how their organizations are performing. By keeping an eye on the door metrics and organizing your work around improving them, you can ensure you're doing the right things to move your projects and your business forward. Of course, understanding what the metrics measure, the leading indicators that inform them, and how to translate them to your execs and stakeholders is necessary to make them useful. It also helps to compare your metrics against industry benchmarks to know where you need to improve. Most importantly, metrics are only half of the equation. Visibility without action is not helpful. It's only by using insight to enact change that improvement happens. Now, let's take a look at these four metrics in more detail. Deployment frequency measures the number of times the code is deployed into production, and it's usually recorded in deployments per day or deployments per week. A higher deployment frequency is an indication of team efficiency and confidence in our process. A team that can deploy more frequently is moving work through their pipeline faster and being more efficient in their processes. In addition to efficient processes, teams with high deployment frequency also use automated tooling for testing and continuous integration tools such as Jenkins or Circle CI. In our engineering metrics benchmark study, we discovered that elite development teams are deploying small chunks of code to production at least daily, if not multiple times a day, to improve the user experience and shorten the feedback loop. Amazon Web Services is a great example of what an elite deployment frequency looks like. They deploy to production every 11.7 seconds. To improve your deployment frequency, you should improve automated test coverage, integrate CI CD tools, automate the release validation phase and release process, reduce the error recovery time on production, and most importantly, reduce overall cycle time. Cycle time, or mean lead time for changes, is the average time it takes from first commit to the code being released to production. Cycle time is divided into four distinct phases, coding time, pickup time, review time, and deploy time. Coding time measures time elapsed from the first commit until a pull request is created. Pickup time is the time a pull request waits for someone to start reviewing it. It begins with PR creation and ends once the first comment is made. Review time measures the time it takes to complete a code review and get a pull request merged. It begins with the first comment and ends when a PR or branch is merged back into the main line. And deployment time is the time from when a branch is merged to when the code is released. In our engineering metrics benchmark study, we discovered that elite development teams have a cycle time of less than 42 hours. Typically, a short cycle time correlates to small PR sizes, a healthy review process, and high deployment frequency. Overall, teams with an elite cycle time are able to deliver more features predictively and with higher quality. Cycle time can be improved by breaking projects into smaller and more manageable chunks, creating an efficient code review process, adding automation to the deployment process, and ensuring that the CI CD process is as efficient as possible. Measuring and working to improve cycle time has many benefits, including being able to deliver on promises and meet the needs of the business. The best way to reduce coding time and by extension cycle time as a whole is to reduce PR size. 
That means breaking the work up into the smallest pieces possible, which requires upfront effort from product teams as well as developers. Breaking work down and keeping PRs small helps the team process pull requests in a timely manner, as there is simply less code to re review, removing a lot of the mental strain and context switching. The biggest cycle time bottleneck is PR idle time, and that is most often caused by overly large PRs. Bottom line, when PRs are small, they're picked up and reviewed faster and more thoughtfully. Tracking deployment time helps teams see how they can streamline build and deployment process. This is especially true for teams with multi-stage deployments. All of this to say that rising cycle times should be viewed as an early warning system for an engineering team's projects. If you're just getting started with engineering metrics like Dora, start with cycle time. Mean time to recovery, also known as mean time to restore, measures the average time it takes the team to get a service up and running when an outage happens. It's one of the stability Dora metrics. It can be defined alternatively as the time between the report being created and the fix being deployed to production. Obviously, bugs are not good, and the quicker a team rec can recover from them, the better. Quick recovery and response times are a reflection of the team's ability to diagnose problems and correct them. Measuring mean time to recovery makes the team more careful and concerned about the quality throughout the entire development process. Mean time to recovery can be improved by keeping PRs small, building a CI-CD system that quickly reports failure, ensuring there's a process in place to take immediate action on failures, prioritizing recovery from failure over all other tasks, and increasing deployment frequency. Increasing deployment frequency to improve mean time to recovery may sound counterintuitive, but actually, the more you change in production with smaller changes, the better you understand each of those changes. If you ship a bunch of changes at once from 10 20, 50 plus devs, and something goes wrong, you have no idea which one of those changes caused it. But if you're shipping code one or two small PRs at a time, when something fails, you can more quickly identify what caused it, and your teams can get to fixing it sooner. Change failure rate is the percentage of code changes or deployments that lead to failures in production. It's the other stability and quality door metric. Changes that result in a rollback, a production failing, or a production having a bug all contribute to this metric. It's measured as a ratio of all of your deployments. So elite teams with a low CFR often have a high deployment frequency. CFR is important because all time spent dealing with failures is time not spent delivering new features and value to customers. Obviously, teams should try to keep CFR as close to zero as possible. Now, a common mistake is to simply look at the total number of failures instead of the change failure rate, which is not CFR, but rather the rate of occurrence of failure. The problem with this approach is that it can encourage the wrong behaviors. Your goal is to ship changes quickly, and if you're simply looking at the total number of failures, your natural response may be to reduce the number of deployments so that you might have fewer incidents. But if you have features to build and promises to keep, reducing the number of deployments doesn't make a lot of sense. You'll have to have larger releases, which not only runs counter to agile methodologies, but will also impact cycle time. And when something goes wrong, it will impact MTTR too. Change failure rate is improved when you ensure all new code is covered by automated unit tests, improve automated testing as part of your continuous integration process, and do thorough and complete code reviews to help prevent issues being introduced into production. A great way to do this is to keep PRs small. So, final thoughts. When anything gets measured, it will likely be gamed. That is, people will change behavior to optimize whatever is being measured. It's just human nature. Everyone wants to look good, but many times this can have a negative, distorting effect on the efficiency of the team and the health of the pipeline. Here's the secret with door metrics. You want them to be gamed. You want your team working to optimize these metrics. Gaming them results in better outcomes. Manually gaming a metric has a negative or no impact on teams. So either nothing changes or the teams get worse. But these metrics were carefully devised to do the exact opposite, create elite dev teams. Since they highlight inefficiencies and waste of time, gaming them will increase efficiency and reduce waste. Consistently tracking Dora metrics will enable you and your teams to make better decisions about where and how to improve your development process. Doing so will reveal bottlenecks and enable your teams to focus attention on those places where the process may be stalled. 
Your metrics tracking can help focus both the development teams and management on the things that will really drive value. They allow you to make decisions based on data rather than merely a finger in the wind or a gut feeling. So clearly, door metrics are important, and Linear B helps you track them easily. In fact, we give you a door metrics dashboard right out of the box. Check it out at the link in the description.